Hello, it's me again, right on time, hopefully. Uh, let's have a look here. I think I see a single gentleman. If I am correct, that would be my good bud. Um, just, let's see, you can hear me without any echoes this time, I hope. Regardless, all right, so we've got a bunch of stuff we're still working on, um, all of it from the Mantic Terrain Crate. So, yep, yeah, bottles. Uh, I was thinking of working on this here sarcophagus. Always makes me wonder whether I should do like the metallic copper look or if I should do Hark indeed, K Chain. Welcome back. Hope all is going well for you, my friend. All right. Give me a moment to always end up getting distracted by shenaniganery. All right. So, our coffee guy, technically speaking, if you want to talk historically, he didn't really find these as anything but sand. I really want to do the sarcophagus. Plus, it's got some nice detail on there. It's not an unimpressive amount of detail. It's pretty good. Yeah. Trying to figure this out. See what we can do with it. All right. Well. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see what we can do. Hmm. That wouldn't be bad. All right. Well, then let's get started. So, I'm just going to grab one of my here, one of these here paints. All right. Hmm. All right, so we'll start with a base coat of some sandy style stuff. All right, sadly, most of my sand colors are air paint, so I'm going to have to work a little bit harder than average to get them to stick. A lot of the problem with having been gifted so many paints from a friend. Uh, bought me a bunch of citadels, which at the time I was quite happy about because honestly it was better than nothing. I used to paint using craft paints way back in the day. You know, those AC Moore apple barrel ones that, uh, that you see at the Walmart. They are not great. They are the opposite of great. They are quite bad, actually. Bad. Um, but on top of that, it was just a bit of a mess all over the place. Thank you. 
Okay, so base coats of Tyler and Sam. Should be relatively simple to do. We're just let me start. Really can start anywhere. And the reason why I'm base coating this entirely this way is because I still haven't made up my mind as to whether or not I want to do um non-metallic metal gold or non-metallic metal copper on this thing. I probably won't because and I've mentioned this in other streams, it's terrain. And terrain is not terrain can be nice. Actually this is one of the nicer things in the Mantic trade. But it's it doesn't often merit that much attention. People don't look at it as much to begin with. So it forces the question of whether or not you even want to. You know, uh, the first thing I posted up on here, which funny enough is not on the Twitch itself, it's on my YouTube channel now because uh, the Twitch didn't save it, is a, um, uh, a, a non-metallic metal attempt on some sword and a stone. And uh, I wanted to do that as non-metallic metal regardless. Because it was just just unique enough, or just mimetic enough, really. And I mean old school mimetic, not not new school mimetic. Just old school mimetic enough that um that it was actually fun to have around and have paint done done with a really really good paint job. Whereas you know no one's gonna stare that hard at the sarcophagus or at a table or at a chair or what have you doesn't merit all of the effort doesn't merit the, the the four hours like i did that thing it was just a sword it was just the sword in the hilt in gold style it took me four hours to do it's ridiculous ridiculous amount of time it was three hours but the, but the point stands it took a long time too long for it to like for for for, for me to want to do it for for something else that is also turning um that's really neat to leave. Oh. All right. So one of the big problems with this air paint is it doesn't cover nearly as well as it should. You know, you don't have to thin it, but it's just not sticking on there not that well. The nice thing about it, though, is that it's so thin, I'm not going to lose any of the details this many came with, which is convenient. I won't deny that it's at least nice. In a way, these things are so thin, they're almost like a wash. They'll sink, sink into the recesses and paint that better than they will the surface. It's a little annoying. I'm also trying to do some research on the side while I'm doing this and just trying to find a decent source of... Um, Uh, what a sarcophagus looks like when it's painted. Because all the sarcophagi you see historically, they seem to be entirely, you know, sand brown. Makes sense. I'm wondering if I should just go with that, in which case I'm not going to be doing very much work on this guy at all. Actually, I think I'll be doing too little work at that point. That makes me equally unhappy. Know what I'm saying? Let's... Yeah. I should stop being so unfocused and just do nice broad strokes. Get that first coat to at least kind of stick. All right.
So hopefully now that this bit is dried, get some more actual coverage. This is such weird paint. But I'm making do with what I got. I can't say I've got the best stuff on the planet available to me. But eh, you know. You use what you can. That's uh kind of the obnoxious thing about it. You're often limited by the paint you have available to you, and even more annoying, um, you don't know when something's good. And even if you ask, the likelihood that any of these fucking jackalopes will respond to you is low. You know, it's there are, I am sure, a dozen and a half different paints that people recommend, but they also can't tell you, they also haven't tried all of them. So, you know, like something like Andrea, whose, whose paints are really good. I got their yellows. Their yellows are awesome. Um, but I had to get the yellows. I, I couldn't ask anyone else whether or not their yellow was good. You know, I read it on a website or something. And then when I asked other people, their response was, well, I bought these other colors, but I have no idea about that one. And, you know, they've bought, like, six colors, and they're giving it rave reviews, and you're like, well, what the, what the hell does that mean? Can I even, can I even depend on this information you're giving me? Or is it all nothing but pointless conjecture? And a lot of times it's that. I mean, there may be some legitimacy to what they're saying anyway because of their experience or, or because they, they have a trust in the manufacturer. They have reasons to trust that manufacturer, reasons that you may not personally because you don't have that experience. They don't want them. Um, I think it's one of those things that is arguably poisonous within the within the painting community is you ask for specific advice and people are scared to give it. Purposefully scared to give it. They are terrified that someone else will prove them wrong or that they'll be called out because this ho this 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 hobby universe it lives on recommendation. And that means that if someone recommends you something and, and then it turns out to be a bad recommendation, their credit gets lost. If someone recommends you something and it turns out to be a good recommendation, then that thing gains more rep. But it's kind of a loose, loose scenario for the recommender. You know, they're not going to be known for their breadth and depth of knowledge of you know, paints and stuff, not unless they've got like a big ass YouTube video and a huge rep. Sure, at some point your reputation becomes. Ethic, but you know that's a long shot at that something when you're on a chat or something you're terrified about telling somebody whether or not something is a good buy because you don't know whether or not it is you don't really have an idea um and again it ultimately it only reflects badly on you it'll never reflect positively on you it's kind of like it's kind of like I don't know, being security somewhere, you know. Um, nobody's going to thank you for ensuring that a day is unremarkable. They're only going to blame you for when a day is terrible. Recommendations given to people tend to be thankless. Unless that relationship between recommender and recommendee becomes a personal one almost like an apprenticeship, then then it's different. Then you know that there's a, a level of trust that is otherwise not, uh, not quantifiable. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of my beef. Right now I'm using these Citadel Airs, and they're kind of balls. They're definitely not meant to be applied by brush like this. They're supposed to be airbrushed on, and I could do that. I honestly feel like maybe I should have, would have saved me a couple it's, but um, would be kind of impossible to make a streaming setup for brushing anyway, especially given the amount of stuff that I would have to have on the table and all of the setup I would have to do. I would have to set up that crap and then later break it down. And um, the The noise, the amount of noise it makes. I, I don't have like a nice uh, microphone here. You're listening to me from the microphone on my camera. And it is not 
it's not great. You know, I'm sure it's tolerable as long as I don't walk away from this exact spot I'm currently in. But it isn't great. So I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit before I put another layer on it. I'm feeling like I'm being putting putting down an irresponsible amount of paint. Um this silly bit is supposed to be the bottom of it, but the terrain crate makers were lazy. So it's also the bottom for the Iron Maiden we painted last time, which is silly because these two sons of bitches don't match, you know? So what's the bottom supposed to be? Like somewhere between sand brown and deep ass metal? I mean, it's silly. To me, it's silly. All right. In the meantime, we've got some other stuff here that we'll be working on. Um, this is not from the Mantic Terrain Crate. This is a fancy thing that gets attached to a furnace. Um, I liked how it looked. It actually came from a, 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 a guild ball set or some such thing. So we're going to be painting that as soon as I figure out what colors I should be painting it. Because it is a silly looking thing. But the nice part is, as you can probably see, this right here, this is wood. There's wood grain at the bottom, and I'm going to teach you very easily how you make wood grain look like wood with literally zero effort. This is going to be this is going to be super easy. I'm going to do that now because we may as well. So I'm going to grab some white paint. I'm grabbing this rack white, but you don't have to. You can use whatever you please, whatever pleases you, so long as you're Applying it dry. I'm using this nice, uh, not so nice, it's like a $3 makeup brush, the kind your girlfriend refuses to use because she's classier than that. This is. We're gonna just pop some on there. We're gonna do a dry brush. Yeah, we're gonna do a white dry brush on an entirely black um, surface. You'll see why. Cleaning that off. And we actually want to put this on thick because it is uh it's not gonna matter. But more than that is the fact that you want there to be a forced amount of contrast. So there it is. It doesn't seem like I've done much. If anything, it seems like I've gotten rid of most of the texture, right? Like but it's there. You can still see the texture. And you will see what happens. Once we apply, the special stuff will be applying to it. So, I'm going to reinforce one side of that. I think this was a little too much. I, I do have a few regrets there, but it's all right. You'll see. It, the, the, what we're going to apply to it is going to fix it on its own. So, convenient. All right. So, we've got that. Now, what we're going to do is just grab... Ink. Delicious, delicious ink. Sepia ink is a uh, a thing that gets used in a lot. It, it, you saw me use it in the uh, saw me use it in the gold before. We're actually going to be using it. Um, or this wood, because it's also useful for wood, funny enough. It's actually kind of great. See, this this particular, I've got the Dollar Rowney one too, it's not as good in my opinion. The Dollar Rowney one works much better with for other purposes. The sepia ink is very rich. It's what we used for all the non-metallic metal gold. And all we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying it to all of the parts of this that we want to look like wood. So, and see, look at that, that right there. It's like magic. I didn't even have to try. Right? It's already differentiated the the brights from the darks. It's capitalizing on that dry brush and the elevation and settling in in different places to give the idea that it's a wood grain. 
pretty easily. It's like zero effort. And you can do that again and again, as long as the sculpt itself has the texture required, the ink will do the rest for you. And what's even crazier is that, um, and people have figured this out, um, people with more talent but less social skill than I have, um, they figured out that this stuff, if you grab, like, if you want to just give something a, uh, a wood texture, this is all you need. This and white and black. And you can literally just do it. Um, you, you can, if you paint something striped, slightly chaotic, give it the idea of a wood texture and have it done. And you throw the sepia ink on there. It, it doesn't even need a texture because you've painted the texture. It will react to the acrylic paint on on it and create this effect on its own. See that? So pretty easy stuff. Minimum effort. Literally doesn't matter what you're doing. As long as it's got a grain, prime it black, dry brush it white, and put the set put the CP on it. Or you could paint on black and white lines and have it become like this on its own. Super easy. Um, we'll go back to doing the rest of this later because the rest of this is iron, and then the red part I, I'm going to color. I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the the squeezy bit. I don't know what you call one of these things. Uh, we'll do that later. Meantime, this is dried. As you can see, the coverage isn't perfect on it. So we are going to continue until we cannot see, until we can see nary a hint of the gray primer. Um, one of the things that painters are obsessed with is making sure that you can't see the gray that you put underneath, or the black if you primed it black, right? But more importantly than that, the gray. The reason you prime black is because it helps you pretend that places you've missed are shadows. Because your brain automatically thinks, ooh, super high contrast must be a shadow. Um, when you prime something gray, it's because you've got things you want light and things you want dark on it at the same time, and you don't want to offend either. You generally want to prime in uh, one of the three colors. You want to prime white when you're doing skin, when you're doing shiny things, painting yellow when you're painting red, um, when you're painting certain shades of blue. Or when you're painting white, like white cloth, or even ivory or bone, you generally want to you want to prime white for all of that. Bone is actually the exception there. You don't really want to prime white for bone because bones are inherently dirty at some level. So yeah, um, but that's what you want white for. You want to you want to put black as a primer when you're doing darker colors, when you're trying to be an absolute edge lord and painting something from Games Workshop, and you want it to look dreary and moody and edgy. That's when you want to do. That's when you want to prime black. You want to prime gray. You want to prime gray when you're doing a bit of both. When you've got skin you want bright, clothes you want dark, and you've got um, a source of light on the mini, but it's also supposed to be illuminating um, clothing that's in the dark, or, or otherwise really any mini that's supposed to have high, a high contrast of colors, not just a high contrast of shadows. Then you want to prime gray. That way, it's 
arguably, if you're cynical, you're saying it's equally difficult to get the dark color sanicidus to light colors. And this is kind of true. But more importantly, it means that it's not neither of the two sides of the colors are going to take 20, 20, 20 coats in order to actually get coverage of. Because that is that does tend to be the problem. Is that you know, you prime something black and then you try to paint it a stark white, it's gonna take you hours of you putting the white on, waiting for it, waiting for it to dry, watching as it looks slightly less gray than it used to, and then doing it again and again and again and again. Even with that ink I, I showed you the last couple of times, even with that, it's still a pain. It's still gonna be really hard to pull off. You're putting white over your blacks. Um or if you're putting your darks over your whites, um, if you try and color uh, a white primed mini with a dark color, not black, because black eats everything up. Black will probably take one or two coats. But let's say a maroon or, or a dark brown, you're going to get this weird almost pooling and splotching. And it's not going to look very good. It's not going to look very satisfying, and you're going to have to do it again. And then you might get something close to the color but slightly desaturated, and you're going to have to throw it on again. And you're going to keep going until you get what you want. I actually kind of regret priming this guy gray because this sand color probably would have benefited for a white. But, you know, it's been done. You just you carry on. That's what you do. So I'm going to let this extra layer dry. And in the meantime, we can work on the metal of this thing. I'm a jig, you know, no big deal. Well, let's not use those super nice metal colors I normally use. Let's try just using a regular. Air, like if I Google this up, is it going to be an air blowing thingy for oven? Like, what do you call these things? I don't know. Oh, I've got like four of you in chat, not nah, three of you. Let me call this serious question i don't i don't know what you call these things i it always puzzles me i um i genuinely can't remember what these are called um it can't be an air blower is it a fan? it's a bellows there we go These things are funny enough. It looks like they're leather, not metal. This 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 doesn't look like leather to me though. This bellows looks like it's got big metallic plates on every side. Like that. Yeah, and the uh, the OG paint job for it paints that bellows as metal. So I think we're gonna go with with metal then. Um, probably do like a not too offensively dark silver. Actually, gun metal gray. That would actually work pretty well as long as we follow it up with a nice dye primer. Because you know you can't just you can't just have a uh, you can't just gunmetal here. This stuff dries and almost almost like overpowering black color. It's still metallic. It's still reflective. But it is uh, it's not super comfy, you know. So we'll give that a try. I'm just gonna put a.
draw on the wet palette this time. We are going to see how this goes. I'm going to close this one up so I don't get any metal flex in my mouth. We are going to start. This stuff goes on so smooth I can do it in just one lazy motion. We can keep going. You know, like I always say, as long as you're not touching the rest of the wet paint, it's not offending the texture of the mini. That's by far the most important thing. Even though I've messed that up myself, and I'm sure all three of you watching right now would be uh would be willing to call that out. I would still say it's very important. Try to avoid that. Oof. So K-Chain, how have you been, my friend? Harking about over there. Doing a bit better, I hope. Ah, well. Red silence for now. That's all right. All right. So we are just covering these up. And that reminds me, I've left that nasty strip of white in the middle of it because that's supposed to be the, um, it's actually supposed to also be a, a metallic band around the crate so that the crate holds together. Just interesting. I have no idea how you build the billows. I don't know whether or not this is like, I see pictures of bellows online, and they normally seem to be made out of leather coverings, not ones. But you know, it's not a uh, not that much of a stickler for authenticness. I just want it to look cool. Looking cool, that is, you know, goal number one there. So, just covering this bellows up. I'm gonna keep saying that word, bellows, 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 bellows. I'm not gonna stop saying bellows because. If I do, I'll forget. I don't want to forget for next time. You know? And if I have to paint 20 of these and I can't remember the names, then the egg on my face. I have to Google it all over again. Waste more screen time doing shenaniganry. For now, just bellows. Many a bellows are going to be painted today, so long as the number of lengths to many equals one, because I do not have that many of these. Let's talk about the people who made these. These were made by a company named Steam Forged Games, and it's actually a piece of terrain that comes with one of their one of their uh, competitive mini games called Guild Ball, which honestly to me kind of reminds me of Blitzball, like from Final Fantasy X. I don't know if any of you have played that. Guild Bowl is like a six-man team. Um, people have like card-based powers. Everybody's got a stat card. Everything has unique named characters the entire time. It's interesting. I have never actually gotten to play it. I know quite a bit about how it works. But I bought the Guild Bowl sets because they were nice sculpts. And most importantly, their sculpts were kind of designed to encourage to paint people of color. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, African Americans. Um, I run a convention where I run D and D games, and we're around Washington D.C., so we get a lot of what um, are called blurs, you know, black nerds, uh, and I want to encourage them to come and game and I want them to feel comfortable and accepted and generally speaking 99% of all the minis you're going to find out there they're you know white dudes and sure you can you can paint them black 
and that'll work for a lot of them. But especially for female characters, they don't have like notable hairstyles or anything. Everybody's got sort of the same either super long hair that just looks like it comes out of a, a Disney movie or or no hair at all because they're wearing helmets. Um, so I wanted to get some stuff that looked like it was appropriate for the phenotype. And Guildbo made a bunch. They all of about half their blacksmiths guild, which is nine minis total, but half of them have uh, uh, curled or permed or curly or wavy hair. Um, one of them, one of the one of the girl minis, is uh, actually has straight up dreads. She's awesome. I actually really liked painting her when I finished her up. I'll I'll show you guys at some point. Should any of you request, I'll just go up to my big old box of minis and, uh, and pull her out. But um, to that end, you know, I just wanted to have some stuff that, that was notable and different and would encourage more of them to think that they could just play the game and still be themselves and not have to, not have to humor the cultural trappings of, uh, the stereotypically cultural trappings of of, of D and D or whatever, where everybody everybody in the fantasy setting is white or what have you, and uh, I don't know. That's what I wanted. So that's what I looked up. I just noticed this has wood grain here, so we're gonna add just a little bit. We're gonna see if it sticks. If it doesn't, it's not that big a deal. I'll cover it in sepia. So yeah, look like that. Interesting stuff. But yeah, I, I painted all of them. So I was saying, back to where I was, I, I painted about 6 out of the 12 minis. And with them came about a bunch of terrain, and because they're blacksmiths, it's a bunch of blacksmithing terrain. This is one of those pieces. I've actually finished most of the other ones. They're nice. The pieces aren't as nice as the minis, and generally speaking, I, I, I have a beef against Steamforged. I, I'm never going to buy any more of their stuff again unless it's Dark Souls. And everybody is, I want to say, about 90% sure that they're never going to put out any more Dark Souls content because of how much criticism they've received for the Dark Souls content they've already come out with. Backers. Uh, so Steamforged actually may, has made several board games. And every time they release a new one, they get they basically get hated on because... They keep releasing new Kickstarters while still being in Kickstarter debt to all the people who wanted to pay attention to the old ones. Steamforged did Dark Souls. That was their first video game or IP-based um, Kickstarter. And it was cool. It wasn't bad at all. Um, but <clears throat> they had this problem called you know everything in kickstarter takes three years to to release or whatever they took they didn't release anything anything not a single thing until about a year after their original goal because of what they say was a bunch of manufacturing problems from china most people have elected to not believe that they think it was some some other stalling bs I have no idea as to whether or not something did happen in China with all the companies they were dealing with specifically. It's all just kind of a cross. So, my Steamforged um, made a lot of promises. They finally delivered on the Dark Souls stuff, actually. They delivered on it about, I want to say, a couple of months ago. We got everything save for the retail pledges, which are soon going to be getting everything. So everything should be good and positive and nice, except for the fact that they own the Dark Souls IP and they've done nothing outside the Kickstarter with it for like four years. Maybe five now, because I think it's they, they opened that Kickstarter in 2015. All right. So we're gonna paint the 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 accordion part of the bellows in a uh, in a red, and I am because red is a really hard color to start with over black. Yeah, I didn't really think this through, huh? Um, I am going to be coloring this purple first. 
Part of that is because purple kind of makes for a perfect shadow over this color. Uh, it's going to make for a perfect shadow for the red. But additionally, it's because the purple is going to stick to the black and ultimately occlude the black way better than the red. We're probably going to do two or three coats here. Oh, I mucked that up. That was my metal. Yeah, this is not my metal. All right. So we're going to keep pushing this, seeing where we can go. Some of this delicious paramesi, or as you say it in English, cream sauce. I didn't expect crimson to look so dark. I thought crimson was more of an edgy red than a deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, just doing some basic coats. Trying to also correct any mistakes from all the little splotches of metallic paint that got on here. I don't have any kind of normal everyday stuff. Alright. Yeah, Steamforged, um, Steamforged really mucked up the Dark Souls Kickstarter, but that wasn't the problem. The problem that many people had was they mucked up every part of the Dark Souls Kickstarter. They ruined the game itself. The game itself has fairly terrible gameplay. It is by far one of the most painful games I've ever played. Um... I own it. I own the whole, own the whole thing. We, we took a day. We, we beat like all of it. Um, at least all of the Dark Souls one campaign, because there there are two campaigns. Um, the original Dark Souls board game, just the core, comes with relatively few minis. You get your four player characters. Okay. You get three undead, like just three hollows you beat up. And then three ranged hollows you beat up, and then three big hollow, uh, and then two big hollows you big beat up. Then you get three silver knights, um, three silver knight archers, and two sentinels. So that's like, if you want to talk about limited number of twenty-eight millimeter minis, you don't get very many. Like that's what three, three, two, eight, and then three, three, two, eight again. For a total of 16 enemy minis plus four, um, four player character minis for a total of 20 minis. And then, and th this was really the selling point is they give you six boss sculpts. Technically, they give you seven boss sculpts. Um, they give you the gargoyle from Dark Souls 1. Frankly, it's pretty good. I like it. They give you the Outrider Knight from Dark Souls 3, which is okay, although a lot of people are really annoyed by it, because let's be real here, the Outrider Knight is not a boss. The Outrider Knight is a bonus guy that you beat up in a hallway several times. He's not he's not that important. Um, they give you the Titanite Demon, which, yes, also not a boss. However, at the very least, actually memorable. The Outrider Knight is basically just a glorified werewolf from Bloodborne in the game. Um, and the sculpt for it, it's alright. It's it's not great or intimidating or anything. It's just him on all fours, you know, wielding his greatsword or whatever. It's not, it's nothing shocking. Um... Whereas the Titanite Demon is big and imposing and so surreal and weird looking, it's great, right? So from Dark Souls 1, they give you the Titanite Demon, and he's awesome. Which makes me happy. And then they give you, for the Dark Souls 1 boss set, um, Ornstein and Smoke. They give you both of them. No bullshit. You fight them. They kick your ass most of the time. It's They're great. I would say arguably, I would say at least I'm happy with the sculpts. From the Dark Souls 1 boss set. Uh, the Dark Souls 3 boss set has the Outrider Knight first. No, it has the Outrider Knight second. It has the freaking Winged Knight first. Yeah, not a boss at all. He, he's not even a guy you run into. He's just sort of a fat dude with teeny cherubims on the back of him. It's 
it is underwhelming to say the least. Just how little show up. Um, I think the most important part of the game is the opponent is way later in the game. Like you open them like this. That's the only part where you're like, oh wow, okay, that that happened. That's it. It's, you know, they're not. They're basically special mooks you fight. At least the Outrider Knight could beat you relatively easily, even earlier on in the game. These guys, not really, not even, not even slightly. So, I don't know. All right, so I've gotten like 750 coats on this thing, and it's still not covering. Part of that is because I'm using these Nocturna Yeho. They're, they're Nocturna Yeho collab uh, paints. I like them a lot. Nocturna clearly didn't because they've started their own set. Maybe it's because they weren't getting enough money out of these or something. Cynical Joe is cynical. He always made money off of his coats. So what do we got? We've got one side that the purple is a bit visible, but not much. That side, it's barely visible. And that side, it's barely visible. So I'm going to thick it up a little bit. Two C's even. Extra thick. We're just going to lay it on there. Big strokes, no moving the old paint. Seeing if it sticks. That's looking a little more visible. We'll see how it looks when it dries. We're going to keep doing the same. Ah, sorry for that boop. One of my best and oldest friends is reaching out to me right now. I wants the Monster Hunter, but I have a duty to all three of you and whoever else may be watching at some point in the future. I'm just going to keep going. I'll see how he's doing, then move on. I really do need to join him for that um, uh, Chinese New Year uh, Monster Hunter event thing. All right. You know, I'm starting to think this color was meant specifically to to create shades under red, as opposed to to establish a deep purple on its own. Um, I think you could convince me of that if you told me that. Like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense as to why I am suffering so much. There it is. All right, that at least looks deep. All right. Hey, Abdul Hadi, are you watching right now? I suppose not, then. Uh, well, no biggie. At least he's logged on. I appreciate the support of each and every one of my friends who's on right now. My heart is warmed by your presence, pseudo-presence, or, you know, anything else. Oh, fair enough, man. You don't... It's all good. You don't. You, I am thankful regardless. You should be I'm fine. I'm not judging you. That's good. No echoes this time. And yeah, you you go ahead and deal with whatever you got, man. You don't. You're not beholden to me. Mm. You know what I could go for right now? Just a crap ton of sugar. I want to eat so much stuff right now. Ah, oh, man. It's killing me. No, no, I did not. I'll check your FB right now if you want me to. Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm so sorry. Like, 
I know that feeling, man. Um, my my grandmother. Uh, I lost her about two years ago. Now, around this time, actually, uh, I lost her a week before Katsukon two years ago. And, uh, I still remember. And no, no, I, I didn't ping you because of, because of what I read. I pinged you because, I pinged you because I was checking up on you. You, you'd mentioned you were going through some rough times and I just wanted to see how you were. I also, um, honestly, if, if these weren't such rough times, I would have also just wanted to call you so we could gossip about things that, that, that can't be recorded because I like to gossip very girly like that. We gotta, we gotta do the gossip, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, two years ago, I lost my, I lost my grandma around this time. Um, I would say February. 10th maybe 15th of 2018 i was working at a law firm at the time and um she went into a uh a coma and my mother wanted to go over there she had a stroke or something like a stroke my, my mother wanted to go over there immediately so so she flew over and i stayed yes between us girls exactly and i thought i genuinely thought that it was just one of those things, it happens. Every old person gets a stroke at some point, and she was just going to pop right out of it. And she ended up falling into a coma for about two weeks before finally passing away. Um, never, never again to interact with any of us. So we had a chance to say goodbye to her in person, and uh, I, uh, I didn't get to take it. So. You know, it's one of those things, probably going to have to live the rest of my life regretting just a little bit. So, I know a bit of how you feel. At least for some of us, it's a surprise. For me, I feel like it was an active, willful choice on my part. To deny myself the right to say goodbye in person. So there is a bit of guilt there. And we've got this purple one. I think that's good enough. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. We're going to go back to the sarcophagus. Now, if you notice, I don't like to waste time. And I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, my granddad... Uh, passed in 97. It was one year after I'd come here. Um, and he just, I, to this day, I don't know how he passed, but he did. Um, some of them say it was grief because me and my mom had just, just left. And he'd been, oh, he'd always been super protective of me. Um, yeah. That, that's, wow, that's a coincidence. Several. I'm sorry to hear that. Alright, so. As you can see, I'm being really stubborn with the sarcophagus. And. It, Back on the subject of painting, I don't like wasting time, which means I really don't like the idea of watching paint dry. I generally have one or two projects going on at once, one at a very rudimentary level and the other one at something more complex. Because that gives me an opportunity to do something, anything, instead of waiting for a layer of paint to, to settle. That's important, I feel. Um, actually, I think this whole streaming thing in general is important because if it weren't for the streaming thing, I would be working on just a sarcophagus and I'd be watching TV or something. 
And uh, he, it would take six times longer simply because I would be taking breaks as opposed to working on other things that I do. But because I have you to entertain, it gives me an excuse to keep pushing. Which is good. Pushing is something I am not often able to partake in. Sorry, bit of a throat thing right now. That reminds me. I need to go grab a drink because I was promised one. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Um, just gonna leave these here too dry while I wonder about what to do. And also, still no idea what to do about this. I've been staring at this armor set for weeks going, it's too crappy to do NMM on. But also, I don't want it all to just be a tide of steel, because that would be very boring. I don't know. If you are at all paying attention to the chat, and you've got any suggestions, uh, put them on the chat. Maybe I'll follow them. And yeah, we'll see what we can do about that. I'll be right back. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, how are you, Koha? I was actually just getting a drink, so literally wasn't here while you dropped by. Ah, she's gone already. That's all right. We can always bug her in person. All right, let's see. This is dried nicely, so we'll be working on those reds for now because. Those reds are less intimidating to me than a sarcophagus I don't know what to do about. That sarcophagus scares me. In in a way because I don't I don't know what I should be doing with it. That's really that's really what scares me about it. Grab some of this here. Beautiful, beautiful sanctuary red. He's a nice color. Nice old. And these, these paints from the Nocturna Vallejo collab are just so thick. They're perturbingly thick. Um, they're really 
And the problem is you can't water them down too much. Because they already have a kind of rough coverage. They don't have the best coverage on the planet. People complain about it. I rather just love the shades and the pigment of it, so I use them anyway. A lot of us do, actually. A lot of us talk about this. The difficulty of the effort here. It's worth it, you know. It's worth it. All right. So, once again, trying to do this in as few brush strokes as possible because it allows the paint to look smoother. And if you feel that it's drying or not getting on there, you just wash it off and you keep at it. Then you go on to refine. More layers. Until the paint feels vibrant to you. Not to anyone else. To you. Although... Fine-tuning your eyes so that they learn to appreciate that high level of depth, that can be difficult. Um, I don't know if any of you are weebs out there. There used to be a manga called... Oh, Jesus. Um, no, that's not what it was called. Um, it's called uh, History's Strongest Disciple, Kenichi. And, uh, you know, it, it had its good moments, it had its really crap moments, ultimately got cancelled. But, early on, I, I liked it too. I liked it a lot, actually. Um, I was a huge fan of it, right up until the final arc, where it just became, like, it got really, really raunchy and corny. Those last couple arcs were a little much for me. But, um, originally... Also, you may hear the voice of my wonderful father as I'm doing this. Thank you. Gracias, Patito. Está bien, bien fuerte. Oh. Es exactamente lo que necesitaba. <coughs> Oh. Si, sí, está buenazo. Oh, that just gave me one of his cold killing cocktails, which is effectively just. Dude. Um. Hold on. Is Angel Densetsu the one about the crazy. The, the kid who looks like a crazy drug dealer, but is in fact a super nice, hardworking student? And all of the girls he ends up getting because they try to kick the shit out of him. <clears throat> because I love that show. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You have no idea how much I could gush about that show. Yeah. So Pops just handed me, uh, I would say, about a finger and a half's worth of whiskey. Um, half a half a squeeze, like half a lemon squeezed into it. And then a teaspoon of salt. Um. <laughs> And I am gargling that because it helps with my throat. It went up my nose and burnt the inside of my nasal passages. And it's it's just great. I already feel infinitely more healthy than I did two minutes ago. But yes, Angel Densetsu. Holy shit, oh my god, I love that series. Ah, jeez. I wish... There's one thing, though. The second half of that series has too much Takeda in it. Takeda can eat a dick, man. Nobody wants to know nothing about no fucking Takeda. Takeda was shit. <clears throat> Everything else about that was amazing. Except for Takeda. Fuck Takeda. Takeda was the um was the previous bully. He was like the OG bully of the school. 
and he tricks everyone into thinking that no he tricks he like he he, he tricks himself into thinking that that um the main character is his number two when in fact the main character just whoops all levels of ass and Takeda's a little bitch i hated Takeda. other than that that was honestly just a great series oh my gosh dude you have no idea i loved angel densetsu i it's one of the few manga I've ever read that I wish had never finished. I just wish it had gone on and on and on forever. And I wouldn't have I wouldn't have even cared if the quality had fallen apart. I would have kept watching it. I would have kept watching Angel and Setsu. I would have kept reading Angel and Setsu. Oh man. <clears throat> Angel and Setsu was the shit, man. That was oh, that was a wonderful series. I would have I would have watched that. I would have watched a sequel series where he goes to college and gets into college problems. I would have watched a, a sequel sequel series where he tries to work in an office and scares the shit out of everyone. I would you could have kept going, you know? I I'm just saying, like the jokes would have been the same. It would have been Japanese people are scared of creepy people over and over again. Yeah, read. That that read. That's correct. Thank you for correcting me, Abdul Hadi. You cannot watch that show because that the animated version of it is exactly two episodes long and entirely mediocre. Oh, relax. I'm I'm I won't get sick, buddy. I won't get sick. I'm not sick now. It's just that my throat is irritated and I feel like passing out. And it burns a little. I might be sick, but but I'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm joking. Um, I'm sad because you two right now on the chat would have actually been if if um if Abdul Hadi wasn't going to furthermore, you two would be playing board games with me on Friday. What are the plans? So, oh, by the way, uh, letting you know, uh, Malice, that um, Giancarlo isn't going to be available. I don't know why. And um, neither is Hobbs. So I think it's just the three of us. I don't know what we're going to do. Yep, just the three of us. So if you want, we we'll just I don't know, we we'll play Race for the Galaxy or something. I mean, bring in, bring whatever you guys want to play in with me. Just, just bring it. You know, I have the space. God knows I have the space. Even Abdul Hadi knows I have the space. Or I'm sorry, Keiching Chemal, John Carlo. John, you know what? I I, I was gonna joke that. Um. I was gonna joke that uh that Giancarlo um doesn't have a slave name, but you're absolutely right. Um Giancarlo is his slave name. It's it's what everyone calls him because he's doing shit for them regardless. And then he's getting beat by them because he can never do it perfectly right. So he's gotta fuck up for them. Yeah, he's 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 also thirsty. John is a very thirsty, very thirsty child. <laughs> very thirsty. I am really digging how this bellows 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 is coming out. Actually, um, starting with the purple and then brightening it up. Let me uh, let me do that, and you can actually see the sort of higher levels of contrast there. I think that's looking mighty good. It's giving off, you know, more, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, make, it's making it look good. I think that's actually, that moment, it's actually looking solid. <laughs> it looks better in person, which makes me feel a little bad. 
the camera isn't perfect, nor is the light shining on it, because the camera's literally just on top of my lamp. Um, velcro on there, so it's all that. We're gonna brighten that up a little bit more. <sighs> Give me a second, I'm gonna gargle some more of this whiskey, lemon, and salt. Hey there, welcome back to I'm Painting. Everything is fine, I promise. Hey! <clears throat> All right. Well, oh, my entire face is scrunching right now. Oh, good though. All right. We're gonna brighten that up a bit with some uh, Inferno Red. <clears throat> I want to play Route 2. You're serious that with three people it isn't balanced enough? I mean, isn't there one faction that's literally just a dude who wanders around doing nothing? Or, you know, doing adventures, but, like, the faction is one individual. That that absolutely needs to be played, and it won't. That's a shame. Because, yeah, Route would be great, actually. <laughs> Oh, does he? Does the mechanical marquee replace the? Uh... Yeah, but but you're not coming, man. You said you've got a convention to go to. Rada rada, man. If you were coming, that'd be great. But but you're not you're going to a con. A con that doesn't pay for rooming. Less than slash three. Oh, so there are mechanical versions of the factions that that work without that player needing to be there. That's cool. I wasn't aware of that. I haven't. I only. Like, I keep seeing a lot of hype about Root, but I've never played it. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe. Alternately, we could do, you know, something else. I, uh... I bought Race for the Galaxy. And I, um... I kind of want to get at least one game in. Ooh. They had another root Kickstarter? I wasn't even aware. I was too busy painting. And I don't I don't mean that like derogatorily, I was just too busy painting. That's cool. See? I didn't I didn't know these things. Too much of a schlub. I'm trying to avoid Kickstarters because I already have so much stuff I want to paint. You know, unless the Kickstarter is to get my minis painted, I'm not really interested anymore. I don't even have space for more board games, frankly. That's cool. So the Clockwork expansion gives you mechanical versions of all the players? Oof, more factions? So does that mean that it's the Underground expansion lets you lets up to six people playing? <laughs> oh wow. Um flattered I'm seeing five people on shocked. Oh, 
I, I think this is just about done. Oh, dry brush. That's right. I talked to you all about that, and I didn't even do it. See? You all got to yell at me about this stuff. All right. So, um, the only company I know that makes dry brush specific pigments is these douche nozzles. And you know how much I hate them. But you know what? I'm still going to use their stuff because this stuff is useful. Them making useful equipment for me is quite a rarity, so yeah, I'm gonna celebrate it. Six players was available with the first six. Oh, jeez, really? So, th so did they allow for eight players then? That's nuts. The game's turning into Eclipse, except with the animals. Aha. Uh -huh. Actually, you know, in retrospect, Root would probably be graded for them all. Oh wow. You can have you can have two bag vagabond players. Oh man, you'll have a board game room and you didn't hire me to run it. You try to get me to do some like seat filler stuff like registration or security. Info desk. Oh, jeez. I'm off frame. That's what I get for reading all your shenanigans, kids. Alright. So, unlike the last thing we did, where I actually did a dry brush last, I did the dry brush, and now I'm going to oil this up. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, one, I forgot the order of things, and you all can blame me for that. But the second and equally important reason is because I feel like a bellows gets a lot more use than a uh, than an Iron Maiden does. So we uh, we should we should probably all be all have a generally darker value than uh, than anything else. Oh shush, you you keep talking at me. I gotta look in three different places at once. I'm triggered. That's what I am. I'm triggered right now. You're triggering me. With your strange faces, you keep mentioning all those players, you know. And people post that strange white man, and I, I still, I have yet to find out what what it means. I, I don't know anything about this Twitch culture. I, I just like to paint little toy soldiermen, then have them pew pew each other. Who is Kappa? What's he do? Why is he named after? Toad demons, frog demons, turtle demons. Oh, so you're being smug? Why doesn't it I just have a picture of you then? You just have one just you eating a sandwich. That's smug. Ah, oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's true. You're not. Oh, I was gonna say something really mean, and then never mind. You know what? Yeah. Okay. I am accepting what you are saying at face value, and not continuing to snark on it, out of respect. Did I grab the right one? Nope. This is Agrax. Oh, it's brown now. I made a brown. Kind of like the brown on there now. Eh, we'll make do with it. You can always stain it back down later. Oh, yeah, seriously. Nobody even there's a part of Maryland that's south more south than than 
than Virginia? That makes no sense. It's no sense whatsoever. Bellows. The dirty bellows. You know what those are for, right? <laughs> if you two turn out to have known each other, I'm going to crack up. Actual laughter. But then you'd be able to have recognized his name every time I've said it so far, so I don't think you know each other. There shouldn't be any cause for concern. Ugh. Y'all are making me get lazy. May as well stop streaming and just get on a chat with all of you. <laughs> now, she's not originally from there. She's originally closer to up here. Makes sense. Right. What's a smib? Also, does that vibration sound at all for you guys? Oh, geez, really? That's a phrase? Wow. That is, that is sad. Why is that a phrase? Oh my god. Really? That's perturbing. Now it's a dirty bellows. You know, dirty bellows would be a really good streamer name. Hey guys, it's the dirty bellows. Smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell if you want notification of my. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, dirty bellow sounds like something some something you'd call yourself. And uh I agree. I um I don't really have the time for dropping by a con this weekend. I'm doing a bunch of other stuff too, so I go in a well. Right. This guy's done. We're gonna let him dry. Way over here. <laughs> oh, come on. Nobody wants that. Jesus. Jesus. Alright, you know what? I'm calling it. We're gonna do these assholes now. May as well get it over with. You dirty bellows, you. Oh, it's, it's creeping up. Shit. I don't know if you can see it, but the... It's a little too watery, so it's moving around more than it should. Just no, nah, always discomforting. <sighs> it is. That's why I like this um, this particular version of metallic metal. I don't use it very much, but I do on terrain because it saves me time. Generally speaking, when I paint metal, I'll uh, I'll use I won't use metallic pigment at all. I'll use blacks and whites to create the idea of metallic pigment instead. But making an exception for terrain because otherwise it would take forever to paint. Look at all this crap. It's all over the place. Right. You know, this is supposed to be like a pile of armor and swords. 
it's interesting. But I don't want to do NMM on all of this, especially because the sculptures aren't the sculpts aren't great. They're kind of kind of crappy, frankly. Ugh. That's cool. <laughs> That's always sweet. I um I've never wanted to do gunpla a lot. I've gotten to, I I've I've actually done a few gunpla things, but you know, not not like a ton of them. Um they're cool, but or, speaking of which, Malice, do you LARP at all anymore? You used to LARP a lot. That'd be cool. I'm sure they're total pros. I'm sure that what I'm doing is like scrub level work here. <sighs> oh, did they? They always kind of seem like a very tight knit, exclusive, exclusivity focused group. They kind of reminded me of the kink people a lot, actually. At least the kink people in DC. Or like, you were either part of the club or you didn't fucking exist. I know that they they trolled Picado a lot, or they ended up like antagonizing him at some point. Yeah, the LARPers. <laughs> I know that. For a long time, back during my days, like five years ago, they were super elitist and super exclusive. You either looked really, really hot or you learned absolutely nothing. Like there were there was no Yeah, he did get a divorce. There was no there was no exception to it. Like the DC kink scene has always kind of been it's it's basically just felt like an overextension of high school where absolutely Body is just there for themselves, not for the sense of culture or, or or anything. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like the DC kink scene at all. You learn nothing. It ends up being a huge waste of your time unless you're good looking enough for people to want to interact with you, regardless of any kind of level of charm or ability to ability to interact with people. I don't know. But I never enjoyed it. Um, yeah. How was the winter flame? Nice. That sounds cool. Huh. That does not, but okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you would figure they would have to, right? <laughs> makes sense. Well, at least they're being super responsible about that kind of thing. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, this conversation has certainly gone from 
Uh, shit, I don't have to worry about Kappa anymore. Hey, it's cool. It's not a complaint, it's just an observation. My goodness, kids. That reminds me, though. Yeah, the, the scene is really click. It's super clicky. It is annoying levels of clickiness where you're like, hmm, what the fuck am I here for? Unless you're going with people, there's almost no point in going. Wow. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like nobody walks around, well, <laughs> now doesn't Katsu have, like, the pasty rule where even if you're a guy, you gotta pasty your nipples? Although that does remind me, what is furthermore like? I've never been to a furry con. Really? Oh, okay. Of course. Yeah, it might just be a Gaylord thing. Is it really? Loki in what sense? Like nothing crazy happening or or Loki in the sense of stuff happens but everybody knows not to talk about it or make a deal out of it. Eh, fair enough. I mean, I figured. I was just curious. Well, that's cool. <sighs> silver? Yes. We do silver here. Apologize for that. It's just a lot easier to do that in order to agitate the point for me to be. That's cool. Wait a minute. Palette's already dry? Ugh. I'm gonna have to put more water on this stupid thing. I'll be right back. <laughs>
<laughs> Fair enough. So what what normally yeah, uh, like again I'm curious because I'm not gonna show up and probably won't be there for another one. What so what goes on at furthermore? Like what what are the causes for people to go other than presumably putting on the suits? Really? My channel won't cast. Interesting. I wonder why. Even funnier because I have a cat, a Chromecast. No, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you just not get to see anything that happens because you're, you know, working the entire time? It's hard to be a uh, con goer at our age. It's hard to enjoy cons while you work them, too. Yeah, I get you. That's... That's me too. Although I try to find a balance. You can't let a con be all take and no give. You know what I mean? I refuse to let that happen. Fair enough. I've never been to GenCon. Never been to any of the big board gamey or tabletopy cons. I only I only attend cons that you know let me uh, work them basically. Yikes! Really? But that's normal, isn't it? It, it? I think Katsu is like 20 for a badge. Yeah, I get you. Uh, that's actually what my own work has kind of evolved into. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. My own my own work at KatsuCon has, uh, has evolved into basically that. Working with my friends. Which gives me an excuse to chill with them. Especially because all the people who work for me are my friends. It also kind of spoils me. Because now I don't want to do any other con. Unless I'm specifically leading in it. And can bring a couple of my friends along. Like, I don't want to be a, a schlub worker at Colossal Con or something. I already did that once. And it did permanent damage to my arms. <sighs> yeah, I get you. I uh I started attending as a mooch. Like I'd pay for my ticket or someone else would buy my ticket and I'd just go along with friends because they wanted company. Ah, I believe it. <sighs> well that's cool. I hope it goes well for you. All right, so I'm going to try something different. I painted this top one silver, and I am going to use some badger.
What do you guys think? I got two of you on here. Tell me. Did I try to turn that, make that armor, make that top armor plasma fluid or magenta? If I put it up higher, it's just going to look worse, isn't it? Yeah, it's too shiny, see? Oof, uh, come on. Plasma fluid or magenta? Ah, uh, eh, either one. The difference is that one is basically a sort of bright blue and the other one is a deep red. Like, they're literally different colors. Magenta is magenta. Plasma is like a sort of shiny blue. All good. All right, two for plasma. I'm going to be doing the whole piece, and then I'm going to be giving it accents on top of that. First, I want to see what the effect of this paint is on it, because I've never tried either on metallics. These are ghost tints, so they're, they're going to be see-through, translucent, but still have a, a shade of that color. All right. Let's see how this goes then. That's actually kind of nice. It's actually giving it like a mithril look almost. I think they call these candy coats. Badger calls them ghost tints, which is an interesting name for it that kind of makes no sense. Yeah, it's almost like a wash, except it doesn't make things dark. It makes things light and colorful. I almost wished I hadn't colored in those extra um, sets of armor on the bottom there, that dark gun metal. Then I could have made them all different colors, like they were all suits of magic armor. I kind of prefer this idea of having one suit of magic armor and the rest just be schlub suits. Yeah, Abdul Hadi, I totally get the idea of hanging out with your buds at at cons you at cons that you work. 
that's kind of my beef with Colossal Con, is I don't know anyone there except for you guys. And uh, you're all busy with other people. Like, it's not like I'm going to get to hang out with Pam or Starla or Kira. You're all doing stuff. I don't know. It just feels like I'm not part of that clique. Yeah, I get that. That's why I did Colossal Con East, and it was nice to get to know new people, but uh, this is, it's too far away. If I don't have people to go with, it's its not as tolerable. I don't know. Yeah, that's true that you are. You are that social butterfly. I'm going to let this dry and then maybe do a second layer. But, uh, how's that looking so far? You know what? Hold on. I know what I'm going to do. I am. And then. And is that any better? Better lit or equally annoying? Well, I think I got a little careless with it. But from where I'm seeing it, I can still see the color underneath it. I should have watered it down a little bit more to make it more opaque. Although I could be a smartass. And water it down now. <laughs> and then absorb some of the color. So that it's not as heavy, heavily saturated. How is it any better? Yeah, I think he looks good. Good enough for me to not care anymore. I might give him a light color covering where he's still gray and call it a day. So yeah, I presume the magenta would have made it red. Yeah, I'm not like, like I said, this is terrain. I try my best to not become emotionally attached to terrain because it's terrain. People aren't going to be looking at it that much. Hmm. Hmm, okay. All right. Oh. 
What do we got? Mm, we've got a couple more helmets on there. I kind of want to see what this blue ends up doing on something darker, like all this gunmetal. Literally playing around with some stuff I haven't used before. So, let's see what happens. Hmm. It's interesting, because it almost gives it like a... I don't know if you can see too much of it in person, but for me it gives it almost like a a slight turquoise hint because of how dark the uh of how dark the armor is. Okay, cool. I genuinely can't tell because when I look at the the feed of the camera, it looks like everything's too desaturated. I'm actually digging that. I'm not gonna do it for all of them though. Ugh, that's normal. Yeah, kind of pearlescent, exactly. A lot of helmets on this weird sculpt. Hmm. A lot of helmets. This corner in particular, actually. Trying to get all those little corners. Okay. Well, we've just got the weapons to do now. I don't want to do the weapons this dark, because... It'll look unengaging if I do. So, first things first, I'm gonna grab this sepia. I'm gonna mark some wood. Mm, that's too much. It's a little bit too much. All right. And no. I was going to do that, but... This is still wet next to it. It's going to make a mess. I'm just going to let it dry for a little bit. We're going to move on to something else for now. Whoa. What do you think, Abdul Hadi? Do you think I should do some kind of shenaniganry with this sarcophagus and start actually painting colors onto it? Or do you think I should just leave it sand? What would be more legitimate? Realistic. Colors? All right. So, like, you're thinking, like, turquoise blues with a couple of reds and blacks on there? Any specific patterns? Maybe you have a, a an artistic reference I could take away from? Yeah, fair enough.
Yeah, because I'd actually love to paint the sarcophagus for real. It's got just enough detail that it won't suck to do that. All right, then in the meantime, we'll look at some tiny, tiny thingamajigs. All right, so for the woefully uninitiated, for whatever godforsaken reason, this is a block of wood with a cord on it because there's supposed to be a boulder. And you pull it. Yes, exactly. You're on canny ability to drop in when you're gone. Exactly. Um, boulder. And you're like, you're supposed to, supposedly people did this when, when you were highwaymen, you would have a boulder being held up, but it was effectively a ghetto ass break, a brick, and you'd pull the brick and the boulder would roll over and, you know, knock a wagon over and then you'd raid it. I don't know. Silly. These are some mugs and these are some candles. So we go and work these guys while, uh, while Abdul Hadi gets us our, um, gets us our reference material. <laughs> I learned last week when I did this that I should never put these on a weld palette unless I plan on never using that weld palette for anything else. Because when I was shading my mummy, some of the old uh, some of the old ink from here fell onto the shader, and ultimately the mummy ended up with white recesses. Is just just weird. So we're gonna put one drop of ink on our on our wet palette, and we are going to go ham on these candles because they're candles. You know, they're just candles. They're just freaking candles. Just paint the damn candles, Joe. I'm going to do two coats, maybe three. And yes, I'm painting them white because I primed them gray because I'm dumb. I didn't think ahead. I should have primed this white. Candles are, you know, an ivory color. So while we're doing that, welcome back, Kohai. Five bucks says you're already gone again. Oh, no, you're still on. Mad shock. Mad, mad shock. People keep telling me to sell my stuff. They have no idea how long this takes or how much I would have to charge in order to quote-unquote break even with my time. It's cracking me up. It was just, uh, just in a conversation with a friend. And she was like, have we talked about how you should be, be selling these? And I was cracking up. I was like, you do realize all of the good looking ones take between 10 and 30 hours. But at least, at least baked goods are finite. And like, that's a, that's a real, real ass business. Selling painted minis. I feel like there's very few ways of selling them um, without losing more money than what you're what you're getting out of it. Why do you get mad about the baked goods thing, though? Like, isn't that a compliment? Doesn't that mean that they're great? Oh, fair enough. And if they were a job, they would just be annoying. You'd just resent it. It would be pressure. Well, yes. I, I know it's done on a commission-based basis. Um, But it's still super miserable. And frankly, even if it were done on a commission basis, 
Oh, fair enough. Well, that's normal. Speaking of which, are you are you bringing me baked goods when you're dropping by? You're gonna drink all my booze and play on my nice table. You're gonna bring me. You're gonna bring me like a billion cookies, right? I'm not gonna need to eat anything that day because I'm gonna get all my carb intake from your cookies, right? Look at this. Ooh, wow. All right. That is way more baller than I was expecting. Amazing. Thank you, Mr. Hadi, and thank you, the Mel. I, uh, I, I hope to get some magnificently baked goods. And also to hang out and play Root. Or whatever else. You know, anything. I, I know you guys really love Root, but if it, it can't be done, that's fine too. Either way. Right, so, funny enough, you guys remember how I was telling you about the, um... Oh my god, can I have both? Oh, that one's cool. That one is really old. Dang. Um, can I have both chocolate chip and M and M cookies? You know, Joe likes likes to be a mooch. He can. So you guys remember I was uh teaching you or showing you how you do that special wood technique. It's really easy, right? Well, you can technically do it on just gray, um, because. The way the sepia reacts to recesses is to naturally settle in them. So technically, all I have to do is that, and you can already see where it's where it's adapting to the texture and becoming darker than than it needs to be, and it's effectively becoming wood on its own. I don't, you don't even need to do that trick necessarily. It depends on how good your sculpt is. It depends on how good you are at dominating how the paint should move. See? Easy. Easy stuff. Look at that. That's wood. It takes no effort at all. Oof, okay, yeah. 48 cookies. That's a lot of cookies. You don't okay, fine. I'll do M&Ms then. M&Ms are always delicious. You can never have too many M&Ms. Mmm, sepia. See? Kohai sepia is so useful for me. It is just top notch. It's wonderful. What? Frame again. Dang it, Mel. Tempting me off frame with your cookies. He's got to learn how to do these sort of wider strokes where you put the brush on and press it down just a little and then you go and that just makes the lets it drop all the paint right on there lets it squeeze on mm. <coughs> oh you keep that up you temptress delicious delicious cookies mm. Ah, oh, man. All right. So now we've got this rope. Rope is a little bit annoying. Um, I'm not a big fan of rope. Not painting it, at least. Eh, there are other uses for rope that are magnificent. But painting it is a pain in the butt. All right. Yeah, you would laugh. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. That's in the lobby. So I just use this. Yeah, you're a smart ass, you are. Ah, well. Those were the days. All right. Yeah. Like I said, though, my experience with the DC kink scene kind of destroyed my my love of rope. It was not... They weren't great. 
And it's not like I have anyone to practice on, so you know, there's that too. Super duper rusty. Such is life. Not but a gaggle of disappointment with a couple of moments of light and happiness. Yeah, it looks green because of, so literally, I'm using the same color I'm using on as, as a base for the sarcophagus. The only reason it looks green is because there's so much gray that's predominating there, it's fooling your eye into thinking it's green. Once I get enough base coats on there, that the, uh, that the gray is no longer visible, it will get better. But for now... It will have to look like it's been riding on a boat. <gasps> I'm going to need some more of that. Eh, Tyarn sand. Damn. GW names. So dumb. Wouldn't they just call this sand? Why's it gotta be sand from wherever the hell Tyarn is? It sounds like a real place. Talern? I don't know. I never like GW stuff. Always seemed a little extreme for me. I know that the whole point of it was originally for it to be a parody, but then they started taking it seriously, and I don't know. And a little sloppy. It's a base coat, so who cares? And it's rope, so it's innately textured. Plus, it's the bottom, so nobody's going to see that much of it. Right, and while the rope is drying, go to the sarcophagi. So, just to ask, um that uh so the head of it is actually gold am i right in it's gold with striped black paint on it The first one you sent me. It looks like it's gold. Some kind of work copper or something. I mean, I could do gold. Hmm. I might just copy this thing's design entirely. It seems very close to this. Yeah, that looks like gold. All right, we'll do some gold then. Shoot. Making me pull out all of the delicious Vallejo Big Pot of Relics. Don't worry about that. That's nothing I promise. Don't worry about it. It's just being being lazy. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, let's put some gold on here and see if we can work that in then. That calls for a long. Alright. We're gonna try to be as gentle as possible about this. Because this guy will make him miserable. I wanna make him happy. I wanna make him a happy god.
So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to paint it gold entirely, the, the head and the um, headdress. And then I'm going to shade it. As you can see, this gold is kind of, it's too bright and also too weirdly desaturated. It looks more like guild than gold. It looks almost innately false. It doesn't look like perfect gold. It looks like false gold. Like it's too bright and shiny for it. So what I'm going to do is I have an ink that, funny enough, isn't the ink I've been using this whole time for wood. It's a very similar but slightly different ink. And it'll be perfect for making this gold have depth. So now we do the other side. Ugh, it's so hard to not lose your patience while you're doing this, where you're like, nah, get it covered up faster. I only got so many hours in the day before I got to die and work. work and die. Maybe both at once. But if you've got the patience to just keep a steady rhythm, all you really need is a steady rhythm. It doesn't matter how big your brush is as long as you can keep a steady rhythm and go a while. You know what I'm saying? It's all about those steady, steady rhythms. And patience. Talk to your brush. Understand what your brush is looking for. Respect your brush. But don't respect it too much. Only respect it as much as it wants to be respected. Some brushes want to be dry brushes. All right. That's the life lesson in everything I say. I forget it the next day. Including the lesson where I should be keeping my goddamn hands in frame. <sighs> All right. So we got a we got ourselves a gold man, a gold head, but it's too gold. And it's got no shadows. But we're gonna we're gonna take care of that real easy like. So we're grabbing some of this. You've seen the white, now you see the brown. The Dalarowni sepia ink. Which is not Vallejo Game Ink. They look identical in their pots, like they're both super deep looking. Plus, the pot for Dalarowni is itself kind of black, so it makes it look even darker. It's weird. You'll see the difference once I put it on. <laughs> the biggest difference by far is this smudges better on metallic surfaces. It's also darker. It's more condensed. So... Let's DL and have a look. All right. So not unlike a shade, we're just going to grab and pull up. See, compared to the sepia, it almost has a red feel to it. But look at all the depth it adds. It's so much deeper. Just look at that. 
one half against the other. Now it feels a little bit more like gold and a lot less like gold paint. So if you've watched some of my older videos, you may be wondering why I'm not doing non-metallic metal here, and the answer is twofold. First, I'm lazy. And second, it's terrain. As a grown-ass adult or a growing artist, you are ultimately going to have to learn and determine on your own when something is and isn't worth your time. And at this point in my life, Painting terrain as non-metallic metal is simply not worth my time. It can be cool, like that one sword I did, but generally it isn't necessary. Nobody's going to stare at this guy for that long, you know. I'm going to keep saying that. I think this is my fourth time saying that, and I'm saying it because you all got high hopes and dreams. You all think this is like an MMORPG where you can just keep going keep going and ultimately you'll have everything you wanted exactly like you wanted it. And yeah, we're all programmed to think that way, but it's not it's not great. That would be nice, but I don't have an editor. You want to be my editor? I'm looking for an editor. Um I can only pay you in praise and exposure. More praise than exposure, frankly. What am I exposing you to? Like six other people? But the reason I keep saying it is because you're going to have to learn that lesson someday. It's going to fucking hurt because you're going to realize you can't paint everything you've got. And then you're going to realize that you can, but it's not all going to be that good. Really? Are you volunteering to be my editor in exchange for praise and exposure? Because I'll take you. What do you mean you claim person number one? What does that even mean? What I need I need you to be more specific. I'm confuzzled. So confuzzled. This, I, I'm still confused. <laughs> oh, well, I am pretty sure there are five people on here. I don't think another TTV viewer is a, is a person. I think that's a bot. Um, pretty sure that's a bot. What I'm doing now is, even though I'm telling you not to do too much work, I am doing some extra work and adding highlights back in. After all, we just made this guy, this thing look so dark and tarnished and used, which is great. Use and depth and dirtiness and grunginess, it can really work for you, right? It can, it can be super nice and enjoyable, but, but you can't have some dark. You can't have the dark without some light. Can't be aware of one without the other. So bringing back those highlights, just creating that effect of three dimensionality. It's important. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fine. But but are you gonna edit my videos or not? Yeah, I don't. I don't care whether you're person number one or number seventeen. I'll always call you person number one if you like. You were the first on here. You're the only person who was here on time. You were like seven thirty. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna watch Arturo paint the shit out of some minions. Wreck the fuck out of those minions. All right. Okay, so we got him. Now, according to this image, this handy dandy image that uh, Jamal gave me, I could um, stripe him. 
which means that every other line of of a, a face would have would be striped, which I think might work. Oh really? Oh, it was just a coincidence. You're not you're not that loyal. Thanks, man. Just just shit all over my heart. Just spread those gargantuan butt cheeks and release all over my hopes and dreams. That's what you're doing right now. Be in a butt. Oh, it's butt. But Lord, if you will. Of course, of course. It's not like a suspiciously specific denial. No, no. Just for that. Just for that. I'm going to stay up for another half hour and keep painting. Because I've got nothing else to do anyway. All right. Ah, oh, bollocks. This thing is stuck. The paint is stuck in my dropper bottle. So, I'm going to poke a hole in it. There we go. Hole poked. Whoop! Oh, that's way too fucking much. Ah, ah well. I'll make do. All right. So, a little bit of this. Abaddon Black. Yeah, I keep bragging on GW, but I'm using all their paint. I'm a hypocrite, I know. It's fine. It's been noted. It's already in the history annals. So. Going into the bottom. Okay, so. I'm gonna go. One. Okay. Hold up. It's being a hater. So I wonder why these guys got striped like this. I wonder if they like they thought, hey, I want to be as threatening as possible. Make my headdress look like a bee. Also, what do you call the thingy that they wear on their head? I remain uncultured swine, and for that, I apologize. Also, I really should have done this first because painting black over gold is this is this is the first thing I've ever seen reject black outright. I probably shouldn't be using Abaddon black. I'm gonna switch to you know what? I'm gonna out of spite just try the Vallejo black. It's a death mask. Thank you. Yes. Right. So I want the death masks be colored. Or is that not the appropriate appro uh, 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 Am I incorrect in guessing that their purpose was to look like these? Death mask. Yes, the flowing part that sits on the head. It's got like black stripes. Oh yeah, it was just the yeah, on black. Look at that. This covers so much better. Yep, just goes to show you that GW is balls. This has been brought to you by the fuck GW department. Fuck GW, because GW is piss. <gasps> I mean the flowing part. Yeah, you did. I used, um, I used to know shit. Pro. Classic malevolent. Malice. Malice, that's your name. Malevolent is, is a dude I know, I'm sorry. I got you confused with somebody Kohai knows. Because people who staff for me now fly to staff for me from, like, across the country. Oh. 
actually with the stripes on this is starting to look really baller really digging this so it was painted gold it wasn't the death mask wasn't made of gold i'm guessing because then the british would have just fucking raped it or something and we wouldn't have found any of these things they would have just been like sold or burnt or some shit when they went into museums or what have you i thought it was uh i thought it was gold like the whole thing the whole death mask was gold and then painted black in stripes but but it's painted gold they had gold paint that's cool Oh, okay, so the whole piece is shot. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's cool. Never mind then. Well, sorry about that, kids. Okay, so not is the whole sarcophagus gold or just the headpiece? Because like whenever I Google sarcophagi, I end up with lots and lots of stone ones. I'm starting to lose my dexterity. I'm starting to cramp up a little bit. Okay. Oh, all right, all right. Let's see. Well. Also, I just realized I have no music on today. I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully, it's not too annoying. Although, I will say, the first video I uploaded to YouTube already got demonetized. You know, for all five views that it got or whatever. Do, 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 do. Um, cause, uh, one of the songs I had on there was from Power Glove and apparently Power Glove demonetizes videos on YouTube. But I didn't know they were that serious. Yeah, music. Oh, okay. That's interesting to know. Thanks, Malice. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that, especially because none of the songs I've listened to from Power Glove had singing in them, except for like the Mario theme, where at some point a bunch of them yelled, do the Mario all at once. That was it. 
from what I can remember. Yeah, that, that makes sense though. That's good to know. I I don't I I'm not privy to what artists make. I'm only privy to what I consume from what they make. It's weird to say. I don't know. It's, it's the same with all music for me. Like, oh really? <laughs> Should the should the little uh thing here have the stripes too? Cause I don't know. Cause I'm getting it stripes. Cause it's getting stripes. All right, that'll do. How was that? That's not too bad. Yeah, it's not a snake on this. Like, there's no snake head on it. It's a little heartbreaking. Would have been cool if it had a snake. No snake. No snake. Why, God? Why? go interesting okay i think i'm done with the head at least let's see what else i can do for the night have we finished anything today oh yeah we finished this guy good stuff we did one guys we did one Oh yeah, let me show you something I was working on earlier. Um, these are uh, mirrors that I wanted to put things on. And uh, they didn't come out great. But I don't think I'm going to change them. Like I wanted them to be like magic mirrors that looked like you could walk inside them. And they, they didn't come out so great. This guy came out great though. Look at that mirror. It's a good mirror. Yeah, some other stuff. Pile of treasures. This is a really useful crate. The terrain crate from Mantic, the really big one, is like 70 bucks. Comes with so much crap. Fair enough. I appreciate the support, bud. I'm not I'm not happy with it, but you know, it'll it'll do. Alright, well that's settling. I am going to very quickly just hmm hmm no maybe not that but this could work we're gonna grab some of that sepia from earlier and just bathe it See, it no longer looks sickly green because I covered all of it. There you go. I'm gonna let that dry, and hey, we might have two things done for the day. Two teeny, teeny, tiny thingies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is going to be crazy. I'm thinking of painting the rest of them red, like you've got them on this image here. And then going down to like here and doing a layer of orange and then green. I guess it'd be green down here. 
Hmm. And then maybe going back and just dry brushing it gold so that it's got gold highlights over all of it. We'll see how it goes. This is an interesting work. But uh, we'll start with that red then. That red seems to go all the way up to his neck underneath his super cool beard thing. Because it's green in the picture. It's literally red, green, orange, green. Or am I wrong on that? I mean, if I'm wrong, speak now or forever hold your peace. I'll believe you. Wow, this color, this color goes really well over all this sand. Looks nice and saturated. No, 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 that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to correct me if I'm wrong. I know art is subjective, but this is art with a purpose. And the purpose is for it to look legit. So tell me if it's not legit. All right? We keeps it real on this channel. No less. Well, choppity chops. Do some work, man. I'm painting. I can't just copy-paste this link I'm looking at directly right now. It would only take me three seconds to do, and I don't have that time. I gotta keep brushing. I gotta keep brushing or my views will go down. I'm just fucking with you. No oof, no oof, no oof, no oof. Die. Not my life. Sorry, taking care of something over here. It's not working very well. All right, let's get back at it. <clears throat> uh, right? It's green. That's what I thought, too. All right. Well, that tried really well. Holy shit. You know what? I feel like I should be putting the sand color underneath this red all the time because that is the most saturated it has ever looked. Look at that. That is, that is vibrant. I can feel the vibrantness. And yeah, it's got it's got it's got no hands. I'm an ad. So I mean, it's super red. It's so nice. And and don't don't be intimidated by how saturated something looks because you know when you're painting, um, you're often going to shade it, and that shading is going to desaturate it, which means that when you apply your wash on a saturated thing, it will only look more mind blowing at the end. There is nothing wrong with a good good well saturated color um and this this is nice you know what i'm saying this, uh, this is really nice and this is the this is the same color i was using on the bellows this is how important it is to do the appropriate um base coats all right like or even the appropriate primer this guy was primed gray and then I covered them in a sand color, and then I put the red over the sand color. This bellows 
was primed black. And then I put a deep purple on there, and then I put the same red on there. These are not the same colors at all. At all. But that's how we do. All right. So. Just doing a all right. Was that was that sarcophagus that you sent me? Oh God! Now I'm imagining a mummy that's a goose, a goose mummy. Would an undead mummy? Would an undead goose still honk? How would it honk? Would it be a perturbing honk? That's that's the real question. But would it be like like a strange warped honk, like a hurk, whank? Would an undead goose still hoard things it steals from you? Would, I mean, mummies are already hoarders, so are geese mummies like ultra hoarders? Do they hoard everything? Goose mummies insist on keeping all your stuff. Does it all belong to them the moment they awaken? That's what a, that's what a goose mummy sounds like. That right there. Actually, as the color dries and settles, it it just fits even more. I'm really enjoying this. This was a good call for the sarcophagus. How would you wrap a goose in in wrappings, though? Like, would it even stay still long enough for you to successfully do it? Would a honk rug, the twenty third let you prepare it for mummification? That's a, that's a legitimate question. I'm, and now I'm wondering about all the logistics of of geese mummies. Yeah, we're going to cover that right there so you can see it's too thin down here so we're just going to put another coat on normal everyday mini painting stuff nothing too difficult nothing too fancy All right now the big thing is that the image we're working off of the image that abdul hadi sent us is um actually uh you can see where the paint has either chipped or where they've covered it in gold over it or where they've painted gold over it. So it's actually red with, I want to call it like a gold, I don't know if the right word is a filigree or a, or a um, not a highlight. It's like a, it's like a rim of gold around all the edges. And that looked cool, and I want to try that. And I feel like the only way to get away with that is going to be with a tri brush. Because this would otherwise be a mess. Plus, I got to correct some of this stuff here. Like, I got a little bit of red on there. Oh, now I got a little bit of gold on the other side. See, mistakes always happen. It's fine. We'll correct it. Don't, don't feel bad. I promise. It's going to be fine. It's going to be all right. We just gotta wait for that to dry and then we'll paint over it and everything will be good. Everything will be Gucci. Gucci. It's gonna be okay. I promise. It's alright to get sloppy on these base coats. 
the nice thing about this is you're not painting skin. It can be a little sloppy. Preferably you have a brush for being sloppy. You're not using one of your nice brushes. I'm breaking my own rules right now and I am using one of my nice brushes. But I'm also not being particularly sloppy. Like I'm not being super rough with it. I'm not cramming it about. So, you know. What have you. All right. So according to the diagram, we've got the middle strip there is going to be black. And then there's going to be gold filling inside of it, which I see the little images. I cannot guarantee those will come out right. I cannot guarantee that. Look how tiny that is. But at least we can do the black, right? Yeah. All right. And I appreciate you finding me these images because this gives me, you know, this lets me make this this uh, sarcophagus as legit as possible, which I like because I want it to look real. The range should look at least convincingly real, not like super real. Like I said, it's not a centerpiece. Ah, there it is. There's the there's the don't overwork yourself on terrain counter ding. Fucking number number five over here. Maybe six. Ding. Don't overwork yourself on terrain. But still make it good. Or decent or tolerable. I'm not saying you shouldn't be proud of your work. I am saying you've got better shit to do. Like all those minis up on the top right side of your goddamn workstation, just staring at you in all their resplendent chrome beauty, waiting to be painted. They're waiting to be painted. You're not at it yet, though. You're painting terrain instead. You bought a terrain crate while you had so much other shit to paint. Why did you do that? Why? You told yourself it was for D&D. &D. You don't pull that shit out. You know you don't. You know you're never going to use this stuff. But but there you are. You're doing it anyway. You, you bought it anyway. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a lot of you there there are like 10 of you now i am all right fine eight but you know what it feels like 10 the love feels like 10 with all your dread silence right. let's get some these on here We'll do the edges in a little bit. I gave up on using Abaddon Black. Now we're using Vallejo Model Color Black, which is just called Black. It doesn't have any fancy edgelord names. It's just black. That's what makes it great. That and the fact that it'll go over anything unrepentantly. It'll absolutely dominate the hell out of every color that it goes over. You can paint it over white, you can paint it over sand, you can paint it over red. It'll still turn black in two coats. Don't hold back. I don't know how. All it knows is that what it does, it's the best at. It's the Wolverine of colors. It's the best at what it does. Oof. Yeah. Oh, man. So, about an hour ago, I was trying to rant about Steamforged games. They, uh... Ah, it's falling over. No, why? Good lord. Um, They made the Dark Souls game. Then a year later, before they'd even distributed the Dark Souls game, 
they opened up a uh, Resident. Oh no, no, it was a Horizon Zero Dawn game. And then six months after that, even though they hadn't finished distributing either Dark Souls or Horizon Zero Dawn, they opened up a uh, a a Resident Evil Two board game. And then six months after that, even though they hadn't distributed any of the above. They opened up a Devil May Cry board game. And I've never played any of them. But considering how completely, completely boring Dark Souls was. They are, but Simon is good, dude. That's the thing. Like, Simon is good. Like, you can say that Simon Kickstarter like kickstarts more and more like that here's the thing is Simon earned the trust they get right Simon has i think between 4 and 6 kickstarters every year right they've they've probably got a real life actual um oh so it's come on I'm not going to call them come on that's just confusing all right no, it's Simon all right that's it Either that or we call them cool mini or not. Because come on is just it's just a phrase. Right? Don't don't you start with me. And yes, I know that it makes it sound like I'm mispronouncing semen, but then again, they're semen. They deserve that. The come on? That's weird. I I, I never even noticed. Um there's nothing on here. See what you've done, Abdul Hadi. All right. So even even then, though, Simon's got Simon like Simon earned their trust. All right. They kickstarted. I uh, like their first year had maybe two kickstarted games, but they delivered on those exactly on time, and then they just kept making more and more and more. Yeah, exactly. Simon. Simon. <laughs> They succeeded on, they've never failed a Kickstarter, and they've never had cost to delay one for much longer than a month or two, right? They've always delivered solidly. They've never bullshitted anybody. They've earned the trust they get. The only, um, the only thing that Steamforged Games had kickstarted before the Dark Souls board game was the original Guild Ball series of games, which, by the way, were metal and dope. They were really good. Like, you, you, you could easily glue them together. They had an incredible amount of detail. By the time they switched to Dark Souls minis, or to Dark Souls, they abandoned metal. Dark Souls was plastic. And, in fact, most Guild Ball that came out around Dark Souls, the, the time during which they did Dark Souls, was also plastic. It was terrible. Their plastic isn't even good. They're not using resin. They're not even using some kind of high plastic. Simon is literally using uh, PVC. And it's this hard, craggy ass, bullshit ass PVC. Like, it's not even a comfortable, like, decent PVC. I feel like Simon's plastic is better than, than Guild Balls or, or Steamforged's plastic. And keep in mind, that's noting that, oh no, this happened. We'll fix this in a second. But keep in mind, that is noting that Simon's, uh, Simon's plastic isn't that good. And I feel like Guild Ball's plastic is worse. I feel like it's a fucking travesty. And their boxes aren't any cheaper either. So Guild Ball went from metal to PVC to fucking PVC, and it's still $60 a box for six minis and some terrain. That is an embarrassing amount of money. For six minis and some terrain. That is, as far as I'm concerned, a criminal amount of money. It's stupid. So, for one, uh, again, as I was saying, Steamforge never earned that level of high faith that 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 Simon did. Um, and worse is when they tried to. Do Dark Souls and Resident Evil and all of this. Not only were 
the sculpts bad because the Dark Souls sculpts aren't that good. Like, I love those sculpts. I'm emotionally attached to them. I've painted nine of them. I painted Ornstein, for God's sake. Ornstein. Any idea how long it took to do a non-metallic metal Ornstein? It took me three hours to do a single sword. Ornstein was a month of work, and he looks wonderful. And they still fucked up his sculpt. His skirt it looks like a round fucking tube cylinder. His spear is weird. His 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 ponytail is six times longer than it should be. Like he's an anime character, which he is not. I don't know. It's silly. But I think they messed him up. They messed him up tragically. Um, and that's the thing. Oh, come on. You don't know who Dragon Slayer Ornstein is? Fine. I'll show you him. Ah. <sighs> Wait, you know what? No, just look it up. Look up Dragon Slayer Ornstein. O R N S T E I N. Right? They did not do a good job with the sculpt. I'll show you a sculpt once you Google his image. Google him. I dare you. Alright. Interesting stuff. Alright. So this is going to cover terribly because it's air paint and it's GW and it's a dark green over a sand color. But we'll see how it goes. It might actually become so mutable that it works really well. Anyway, Simon messed up in a bunch of different ways. I'm sorry, Simon hasn't messed up at all. What am I saying? Steamforged messed up. The dude looks great, okay? Dragon Slayer Ornstein looks like a baller. Look at the shape of his skirt and the shape of his armor. And tell me they didn't fuck this up. Now, mind you, I want you to excuse the paint job because the paint job saves this mini, right? But just look at the shape of the skirt and compare it to that. Okay. Look at the shape of the armor and compare it to that. Look at the shape of his shoulders and his arms and his boots and compare it to these. Okay? This sculpt, given that it's twice the size of a normal mini, should have had more detail in it. And the mask even, yes. Okay? Like... Also, the ponytail is, like, I don't mind a really, 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 really long ponytail. It kind of looks dope, but it's not that long at all. It's pretty short in the game. Like, they've fucked up so much of him. This should have been the easiest sculpt to make. It's just a dude in armor. He's nothing but a bunch of, like, straight shapes. They somehow ruined him. I don't know. Like, stupid. <laughs> it's actually a spear. It's just the spearhead. Um, I must have not seen the like long haft of it. But yeah, um, so Steamforge ruins. They they ruined the Dark Souls sculpts, and then if you play the game, you come to the Grim Realization. They've also ruined the Dark Souls game. It's boring. It's one of the most boring games I've ever played. The most exciting part of it is the boss fights. They're very good. Yeah, the blade of it is it's supposed to be a spear tip. So they they didn't do a great job on the board game. Um, the board game has the same game feel as the actual video game. The board game is a game where you constantly lose against the boss and you have to continuously go back to fight enemy mobs so that you get enough experience to level up so that the boss is manageable. And sadly, this means that once you've figured out how to work through an encounter, um, 
you're literally just repeating the same actions over and over again in order to level until you get enough experience where leveling will guarantee or at least give you a chance of beating the boss in combat. So it's not great. It's really bad, actually. Because what you end up doing is, like, the game has you generate five levels. Or the game have you, has you generate five rooms before you get to a boss. Each one of those rooms has a certain number of monsters, and the monster placement is determined both by the room you draw and by the tile you draw. So there's some variation. Ultimately, depending on the number of players you've got, you are solving, quote-unquote, the room by doing a risk-reward analysis of where and how exactly your is is threatened by um by these enemies and how to kill them without them doing any damage to you and keep in mind even though it sounds like a puzzle there's also an element of chance because you're rolling to reduce damage you're rolling to avoid damage etc all of that sounds exciting but you do it five times and then you get to the boss unless you know you're going to lose to the boss, in which case you reset the rooms and do it again for more experience. And then you reset the rooms and you do them again for more experience. And, and you just keep doing that until you've leveled up enough. Then you go fight the boss. The boss is, frankly, the most fun part of the game. Um, the bosses are a lot like bosses in Kingdom Death Monster, where they have a deck of cards. And unlike in Kingdom Death Monster, though, um, the deck gets shuffled and changes um, every time you fight the boss. So if you're fighting them, your primary goal that first time you're fighting them is is to... Or the first set of rounds that you're playing the game, really your ultimate goal is to have them attempt to kill you. And to have you be far enough away that they draw their cards, they, they draw their entire deck out, because then you know what their formula is. And that's that's kind of the that was the one genius thing about it was that you don't shuffle the deck in the middle of combat ever. Instead, you you're encouraged to memorize the order of attacks so that you know where the boss is going to threaten and where the boss isn't going to threaten so that you can precariously position yourself in order to fight him. And that part is cool, but it's all the lead up to it. You know, 95% of the game is not the boss fight, it's grinding so you can survive the boss fight. It's a mess. So they they messed up that, right? The the gameplay mechanics are super grindy and repetitive and it's kind of excruciating. But that's that's not the least of it. Um, the mechanics themselves look like a parody or a pastiche of Dark Souls more than more than an actual uh, an actual interpretation of of the game itself. Um, there are things that you can do in the board game that directly contradict the inherent nature of Dark Souls gameplay. The most important one being that every class in the board game has their own unique ability that no other class can get. Whereas the video game explicitly made it so that any class could ultimately be leveled or changed into doing everything else that any other class could do. Your your class was more a starting package than anything else. And that's not the case at all in the card game or in the in the board game. In the board game, you are um your class not only defines how you level up, which is going to define what weapons you're going to use. It it also defines what items get dropped, which is again going to define how you fight. So, you pick a class, it will actually pigeonhole you into a role. You can diverge from that role depending on how lucky you are with your with your loot drops, but but the expect generally the expectation is that if you're playing a thief, to begin, you will stay a thief throughout. If you're playing an assassin, you will stay an assassin, etc. Um, so that part felt a bit like a betrayal. 
Um, another part that didn't bother me so much, but it bothered it bothered one of my friends a lot, was the fact that all of the weapons from the games are in the board game. And they are all completely edited and altered so that they barely resemble one another. Like, if you're going to have 500 weapon cards, it's more like 200. I exaggerate a lot, but it's it's something like 200 weapon cards. If you're going to have 200 weapon cards and... You're going and you're going to be you're you're going to have your designers differentiate them. Why can't you do it so that they're similar to the game? All the weapon cards are have been differentiated to specific um stat roles or the specific attribute roles, so that for example, a weapon has to be strength or has to be dex or has to be int or has to be faith based. And many weapons from the game get changed so that they fit one of those roles, even though they were never, they, they, even though they, they didn't fit it originally. So there are a bunch of weapons that have been changed to be intelligence or to be faith based simply because there aren't enough of those in the game at core, which to him felt like a betrayal. I personally didn't care that much, but you know, some people do. Stuff like that. It was a bit of a mess. Um, ultimately, the game felt like a slog not particularly loyal to the spirit of the game. Um, and the only thing you had to look forward to was the boss fights. It, it was it was a rough game. That's all I'm going to say about it. It was a really, really rough game. And they fucked up the sculpts, too. Which is a huge problem when 99% of the Dark Souls aesthetic is how things look. Which is, you know, they're supposed to, they're supposed to be nice. I don't know. It was, it was sad and annoying. Sad and also annoying. So there you go. All right. I am going to finish up base coating this sarcophagus, and then I'm going to pack all of this up and go to sleep. I need to clean all these brushes, and then I need to at least try and get a good night's sleep. Oh. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, is that an orange or a yellow? That looks like an orange to me. Well, whenever I use bright colors, I try to use something with a lot of coverage. Again, ink. Dalarowney, flame orange. <laughs> All right. Oof. But yeah, that was that was Dark Souls. And the thing is, I can only presume, because I've never seen anybody discuss them, that Horizon Zero Dawn and Resident Evil, if they've even been released yet, have exactly the same problems. That they're just not good games at all. Um, so a lot of people just... Steamforged is kind of being treated like EA. A lot of people just like to shit on them. They just like to talk shit about them. And to their face or on their channels, on their Facebook. I Steamforged got rid of the um their own forums. Some people suspect because they're getting so much hate from their own um their own fandom. Um in fact the fandom joked about that too. The fandom was like, I know why you're we know why you're closing this. It's because you don't want us talking shit about you anymore on your you know you're paying money to have us talk shit about you. To maintain these servers. We remind everyone that you're a disappointment. They came out with something else called God Tier recently. I heard I've heard good things about it. But they've uh they've burned their bridge with me. Unless they end up backing up some sort of ridiculously amazing IP, I'm probably never going to buy anything from them again. Even the Guild Bowl minis I bought, the like 12 blacksmiths I got, 
aren't great. And I'm really sad that they moved on from metal sculpts and went straight to PVC, which... If you've ever met a mini painter, PVC is kind of considered the worst material material to work with. It can react badly to spray primers. It um uh, sometimes things will randomly cave in on it as you're painting it. It'll, it'll just react badly to paint even. It's it's a counterintuitive object to work on, and you can't even use green stuff to fix it at times. So. It's a very controversial move, even though everybody uses it. You know, PVC is what Reaper Bones is. PVC is what WizKids is. Ugh, I don't want to start out on WizKids. Those people are war criminals. Um, PVC is, is effectively what every mainstream um, mini maker uses. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mage Knight is totally PVC. Um, you're talking about the like the little click base ones, right? I owned a couple. I, I owned a bunch of Mage Knight. Um, I actually rebased them all so I could use them as D and D minis. A lot of a lot of nights spent cutting my fingers with an Exacto. Actually, refining the face a little more so that. It's got a it's got a better shine to it because before it was just too dark. Now now it's got contour. Look at that. What is the Vlada Shivatal version? Is that a specific designer? Yeah, that's cool. I've never had the privilege. I owned a bunch because a friend gifted them to me. Um, and that was that was about it. All right. We are done with the start of it. Like, this is... I'm probably going to refine the orange side on here a little bit. But other than that, this is a good base, basis. I'm going to save that image you sent me. We're going to work on this on Wednesday. Maybe tomorrow, depending on whether or not my hot yoga partner cancels again. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Overlord Nemo. We've been painting for four hours now. Maybe, maybe more. I can't tell. I'm going to go wind down and then I'm going to go cry myself to sleep. Have yourselves a magnificent rest of your evening. Thank you very much for the reference. Have a good night.